Hey guys, welcome to a hot sunny afternoon in California. It is starting to get pretty hot here. The good news is there is no earthquakes or there were no earthquakes this week up at China Lake. Hey, what's really going on up there? Based on the input I had, my last episode relic hunting was pretty popular. It seems that some of y'all out there like to talk about the history of the blues and the connections about how artists built their styles through the generations, but I did have a winner uh, with the answer. Um, that answer was Al Wilson. Al Wilson, um, if you want, I'm going to send you something really cool. Now, this episode is called Assumptions. Um, I discovered something that I've been overlooking that I probably should have looked at, and I assumed that something was the way it should be, and if it's not, in fact, if it's off that much, it's going to give you a problem. So sometimes when you assume things, that's right, it makes an ass out of you and me. For example, you may be sitting there thinking, oh, he's wearing a Bob Log shirt. You might be thinking that Bob Log is going to be in L.A. the last week of July. Well, guess what? You're right. Yeah, that's right. Bob Log is going to be in L.A. actually twice down in San Diego. The San Diego show actually has Tim Lohman, who's no stranger to this channel, of Low Volts opening up for Bob Log. All you need to throw in for that one is restaurant, and you've got the concert of the century. So let's talk about another assumption. I went to a junk shop and found this. Uh, I've cut a hole in it already, but that, it had these other holes in it. And uh, when I first saw it, I thought, you know what, I'm going to hang this on the wall. It's pretty cool. Um, I never really thought, you know, it, I could make a guitar out of it. And then somebody in the UK, namely Victoria, Victorian Chris of the Husky Tones, you really want to check this out. It's the background today. I'm going to give you a link to that video that they played at a festival. Uh, look for it right up there, right about now, and then I'll give you a link below. I'll also give you a, um, a link to their uh, channel so you can get this music. You really want to get this. They're starting to play a lot of slide music. It's bluesy, and you know what? You know who they open for sometimes in the UK? That's right, my man, Bob Log the Third. That's right. So anyway, this showed up on a post I made on the internet and these people freaked out like this is the coolest thing I guess in the UK unlike here the more redneck it is the more they eat it up and over here the more redneck it is the more I'm shunned and left in a shed that I call a guitar shop anyway Victoria and Chris thank you for the inspiration uh, not only am I going to build a guitar of this, but it is going to um, be entered in the Antelope Valley Fair where it's going to compete head against head, one-on-one -on -one against Kendra, my arch nemesis, crafting daughter, her cigar box purse. What is this episode about? Well, we've done, it's about what your guitars sound like. Um, we have done uh, some episodes on the past that talked about scale and intonation and about how high your strings are and the distance between the bridge and the knot and all those kinds of things. And I'm going to give you a link to the, the probably the most thorough one up here right about now. Okay, let's talk about another assumption I think I can make. The very first cigar box guitar somebody makes, I can virtually guarantee you the action is going to be really high. Now, I think that we figure that as long as it plays and we can chord it and use a, an open chord, a G, D, G, and as long as we can lay a slide across where the frets are, that it's going to sound good by jumping from the third to the fifth, to the seventh, to the ninth, and back to the third. Now, I want you to be honest with yourself. Do you know of one song, even just one, or one artist that plays all the time just barring with a slide? Do you know anybody that never frets 
and only plays with a slide barring uh, an open court. I, I do know one and I know a couple of songs that person can play. But to assume that somebody is just going to pick up your guitar and constantly use a slide and not need to fret is probably an assumption you shouldn't make. So for example, I might be, I might be doing stuff like this. Now, when I do that, that fretting with my fingers, I want to make sure that the guitar is going to be in tune. So again, if we have 25 and a half scale, meaning there's 25 and a half inches between the bridge and the knot, and you've put a 25 and a half scale fretboard on and fretted it right, everything's going to be right, right? No, wrong. Let's hit the bench and I'll show you a common assumption that we can make that will turn our guitar into a wall hanger. Let's go. Okay guys, I hope you're coming to the conclusion pretty quick again in the scale and intonation episode. It explained all this, but when you're laying out your guitar, uh, before you start cutting in your neck and slotting uh, for your for your box and everything, you want to have some idea as to whether this is going to be here or here and where your knobs are going to be and that kind of thing. So you want to have some general idea. And then when you're laying out your scale, um, again, it's not bridge. So what do we do about this situation? Well, how this started for me is I had an artist who had one of my guitars that played it a lot, recorded some with it, and just kept saying, well, you know, the tuning isn't just right. It's a little bit off. It's a little bit off. It's a little bit off. So they done the worst thing somebody can do with a cigar box guitar and take it to a luthier because luthiers, um, <laughs> they're used to working on $5,000 Gibsons and Fenders and stuff like that. So they, they, they really don't get this. So um, one of the things the person did discover, though, was this part was loose. So when they took the strings loose, this was flopping around. So if this is flopping around here and it's pitching this way, of course it's going to change your string because it changes the difference slightly. So once that was glued down, um, she said there was still a problem. So I'm trying to get everybody to understand, look, it's 25 and a half. We know that measure it. Now go from the 12th fret and find out, is it 12 and 3 quarters inches from the middle of this fret to the knot? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this yardstick from my friends at Agua Dulce Hardware. If you're in Agua Dulce, California, go to Agua Dulce Hardware for sure. But I'm going to cut this off. So I got a tool in the future right there at 12 and 3 quarters. And this is going to give me something handy to measure. And I'll use this 100 times. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this right here. And we're going to set the camera up now where it's right over our work so we can see what to do. The way this works is when we play an open string, pretend there's strings on here. This is the 12th fret. I've got it marked off with painter's tape. You see that? Um, the idea is, is with the string in contact with the bridge up here, or the nut up here, and the bridge here, when we play an open note, and that's tuned to G, for example, see our big thumper string up here. We play that, it's tuned to G. It shows G on our tuner. If we put our finger right here or put this slide right above the 12th fret, it should play a G if everything is right. Now we know that it's right because, again, we're 25 and a half inches. So halfway in between is what? Well, 25 is, is 12 and a half and a half is another quarter. So it's 12 and a half plus a quarter. So 12 and three quarters. So if we take a look at our uh, yardstick and we mark off 12 and a half, three quarters, and we lay this on the knot where the strings are going to be, right? That should be right over the 12th fret. But look, it's not. 
It's actually right there. So, what does that mean? Well, it means that when we play and we're sliding, if it doesn't sound right to our ear, we just slide it one way or another. And we compensate because the slide, the glass, hits the string and it comes to tune. But if we're fretting, our note is going to be that much off. What does that mean? Well, it's kind of like having your strings up that high. If the distance is great and you push down, it actually will make the tone of the string uh, off some, just like this will. So part of the measurement is just not 25 and a half. It's where does that line up, okay? So if I put this right there, 12 and 3 quarters right over that fret, you can see that to make that work, I have to move my bridge back. And likewise, if you look up here, I am this much off on the fretboard plus the width of the knot. That's where my problem is. Let's talk about what this means, how I discovered it, and how to fix it. Okay, let's start here. The end of the of the 25 and a half scale stick cut out of a yard stick, a 36 inch yard stick, is right across the knot where the strings will hit. Um, I'm going to have to round this off a little bit, but it's laid across the fretted fingerboard and comes down here to the end. And you can see that it's right at the crown of the bridge, so everything is fine. But when we come back at 12 and three quarter mark is off just a tad. You see it's right there and that's where we had it marked before. It's actually off that much. Okay, now I've got my 12 and three quarters uh, stick that's been cut down and I've laid the 12 and three quarters and right across the middle of the 12th fret and move my bridge to right there. That is perfect. So now I've done a close-up. There's the, the 12th fret. There's that mark of how much off we are. So what happened? This is a store-bought, fretted, uh, mail-order fingerboard that's slotted at 25 and a half. So I'm going to put that right there. You see that? You can see that it's right in the middle of that fret. So let's go up to the other end now and see what's going on. Well, look at there. Do you see the end of that fingerboard sticking out? Let's make a mark right there. That's not supposed to be where the end of the fingerboard is. That is actually supposed to be where the strings cross the knot. Can you see that? So we'll make an assumption that, that the strings are going to cross the knot about right there. That means that this should be cut back to about right there. Now, if we take and measure millimeters, I guarantee you that this amount right here is the same amount as that was off right there. So what was my mistake? Well, when I laid everything out, I didn't figure out that maybe I should check that the cut on the end of the fingerboard coming from the supplier is in the right spot. So how do we fix this? Well, in this case, let me, I've just got this mocked up here. Um, this is already glued down. So I just have to figure out that I'm gonna end up taking a straight edge and drawing my line right there. And then I can take my flush cut saw like so and lay it on there. Um, if I want to, I can clamp a little straight edge right here. And you will be a bit, little bit better prepared. I could do something like this, a clamp a straight edge, whatever I need to do to get that line really straight. Um, and then I would just simply put my bridge where it needs to go at the end, except it would be here. Now, if there's a lot here, and it's sticking out a ways, and my line, say, was actually there, 
then what I might do is I might take one of my bolt and lamp hardware things, lay it on the line, draw a line here and here, mark those two lines out and take and cut that out and then chip it out and lay either this configuration or this configuration on it. If it's on the other end down there, I just simply move my bridge. That might mean drilling out something, putting a plug in and moving it, but it's, it's not that big of a deal. So let's say we discover that this is short, that this say ended right here and we needed to put it here. Well, the first thing you want to do is tell your supplier, come on, you're short, whoever's cutting these is short ending me here. Um, but that said, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's not some luthier mystery. It's a matter of, I need to extend this wood. Well, someone might say, well, why don't you glue the whole fingerboard this way? That really doesn't solve the problem because remember, the problem isn't the length of the entire scale. It's that uh, 12 and 3 quarters is not the measurement between the 12th fret and where the nut's going to be. So let's just move this down a little bit and say it was right there and you were that much short and you were trying to glue your nut on there. Well, you're still going to be way off. You're going to be off by at least that much anyway. So what you could do is you could take a piece of wood like so. Um, you could set it on here. You could glue it down and clamp it. You could, um, of course, your fret wouldn't be on, but you would take it, uh, saw it, and sand it. Um, depending how much wood you need, you've got, we've got these leftovers from these fingerboard or, or these uh, floating bridges that we use. You glue a number of those on there, but it's certainly not the end of the world. Uh, all you need to know is lengthen it out until your knot is going to be a 12 and 3 quarters where the strings come across like that. So in summary, it's 25 and a half scale from the knot to the bridge is 25 and a half inches. That also means that the 12th fret, which is an octave above open string here and fretting here, one octave above needs to be right in the middle. So whatever your scale is, half of the whole scale needs to be represented between the 12th fret and the knot. There we go. And the 12th fret and the bridge. If that's not the case and you're dealing with a built guitar, you either move this or move this. Pretty simple woodworking skills. So there we go. Look for this one to come out soon. All right, there you go. I hope that you're going to take the time in the future to measure out if you're already not. Hoping that was a lesson to you. A lot of my, my episodes are about mistakes I've made. And you really don't want a little bit being that much off to um, affect what your guitar ultimately sounds like and whether or not people are going to use it. So, um, yeah, look at my mistake and assumption. This is coming together uh, pretty good. And of course, I'm going to be paying really close attention, not only to the 25 and a half mark, but the 12 and three quarters mark. Um, I'll close out by reminding you, Victoria and Chris got some awesome music. Don't forget to visit them. And um, geez, you might actually be seeing this showing up in the UK at some point in the future. I'll see you next time.